the ocean. A vast area of salt water covering up to 70% of the planet. There is a force sufficiently powerful in this world to move these immense water masses. In Salt Hill, in Galway, when the tide is out, the water goes leaving a large area of sand and rocks. Lots of different species live here under the seaweed, the wet sand or in rock pools. In roughly six hours, the water will come back to the shore again and cover this entire ecosystem. It is named the intertidal zone, also known as the seashore, which is the area above the water at low tide and under the water at high tide. The range of the tide is the difference between the low tide and the high tide. This range varies continuously and can be up to 5 meters in Galway Bay. In some parts of the world, the water movements can be much higher with a height of 15 meters. But where does this force come from? You need to gain some altitude and get out of this atmosphere. Located approximately at 380,000 kilometers from our Earth, it's the moon exerting a gravity on the blue planet's surface while it turns in orbit. Its gravity pulls the ocean's waters causing it to swell. When the moon, earth and sun are in line, the gravity pull is at its strongest and we get very high tides called springs. We call this natural occurrence Sezegi. When the earth and the moon are in line and the sun is at a 90 degree angle from the earth, the gravity pull is opposite and we get a lower high tide called neeps. We call this natural occurrence a quadrature. This phenomenon affects lots of species and some develop specific behaviours in accordance with these changes. The sand eels, a small fish from temperate waters, common in the North Atlantic Ocean particularly on the Brittany's and Irish coasts. These are a gregarious fish, meaning they live in groups and move in shoals during high tide to catch their food, plankton. But when the tide goes out, the fish buries itself completely in the sand at a sign of danger. When the water level goes up and the danger gone, the sand eels re-emerge. Fish are not the only species to disappear under the sand. This green crab covered with sand could be confused with a rock. Like the sand eels, the crab buries itself in the sand to protect itself during the low tide. Safe from predators, they wait for the high tide to look for food. The clam senses the tide going out. They look for an ideal area to bury themselves completely in the sand using their muscular feet. If they didn't, the tide would leave them exposed to the air and they would perish.
not too far on the beach, in the shallows, a strange tiny pipe seems agitated on the sand. This pipe is from a sea snail called a netted dog whelk. Its pipe is an olfactive organ giving him a powerful sense of smell, helping him to find its food. This marine gastropod mollusk nourishes itself with dead animals. This broken mussel shell is rapidly located by the sea snail to eat before the tide goes out. A few moments later, a second sea snail comes to join the feast as well. But once the tide goes out, the netted dog whelk are forced to leave their meal and have to bury themselves completely in the sand. If not, they will get cooked by the rays of the sun or caught by a predator. 